Hey, uh, hello, Canada. Um, thanks for having me here today. My name is Ed Dowd. I'm a former uh, Wall Street executive. Primarily, my bulk of my experience was at BlackRock, where I uh, ran an equity portfolio that grew to 14 billion for 10 years. Uh, I made my bones in my career um, discovering fraud and avoiding it. Uh, you know, the dot-com fraud uh, occurred because the investment banks, which were responsible for due diligence, didn't do it. And that's how that fraud was perpetrated. The great financial crisis fraud was perpetrated because uh, the ratings agencies, the third party trusted agent was supposed to make sure the bonds uh, were gonna do what they were gonna do. They were corrupted and then we saw the fraud there. Roll forward to today. And this fraud is primarily being uh, aided and abetted by the FDA. They've been uh, complicit in this fraud. They didn't, they didn't do any data review. The data was fraudulent as far as I can tell, the clinical trial data. And proof of that is that they wanted to hide it for 75 years. So where do I come into this? I thought there was fraud. And now as a financial analyst and working with a, uh, an insurance uh, analyst from Wall Street, um, we've discovered the uh, proof of the crime. The crime has been committed and now the bodies are showing up, unfortunately, and it showed up in, the, in, in our own CDC data. He was able to break it down by uh, age cohort. They don't do that, but they, uh, you know, I guess mistakenly left the data out there. So he was able to build baseline death rates pre-pandemic from 2015 through 2019 and then break it out by age cohort. So I'm going to try to share a screen. There's really, of all the charts we came up with, there are two smoking gun charts in my mind. I'm going to try to share a screen. And here we go. Can you, can you see that screen? Oh, let me share it. I got to share it. There we go. Um, so hopefully you can see the... Uh, um, the chart here, it's page two. Basically, it shows that in year one of the pandemic, primarily uh, older folks died. That's the light pink, uh, as you would expect. Uh, older folks were more uh, at risk from this virus. That's what we were told. And they predominantly died. You can make the case they were murdered uh, via um, um, uh, uh, suppression of early treatments and uh, remdesivir, what have you, but they were, uh, they were killed in mass by early prevent by the suppression of early prevention and treatments. Roll into year two of this pandemic with the introduction of the vaccines. There was a clear mix shift in this. This is all CDC data, by the way. There was a clear mix shift from the old to the young in year two, and you can see that uh, the uh, Gen X uh, rose 28 percent in year two, and millennials rose 47 percent. And I want to share another chart. This chart here, as you can see, is um, the millennial age group. Uh, you can see throughout uh, the pandemic in 2020, there was excess deaths, mostly due to lockdowns. There was early uh, vax that we had a spike there. Then in, during the summer of um, uh, 2021, we we're running around 50, 30%, 30, 40% excess mortality in millennials. And then we had the mandate spike. And you can see what I call the rate of change smoking gun. That's where we accelerated to 84% excess mortality into the October, September, August timeframe. And for me, that's the smoking gun that the crime has been committed. This is an age cohort 25 to 44 that didn't in the in, in, in the three month time frame, decide to commit suicide. They didn't in the three month time frame altogether decide to overdose on fentanyl and opioids. And they all didn't uh, decide to miss their early cancer treatments, which I don't understand because I'm 55 and I've never had a cancer screening. So all these excuses they use to explain these deaths are nonsense. It's common sense to me that this is the, the, the proof of the crime. The virus didn't uh, go from a resp respiratory virus in year one to a uh, cardiovascular virus in year two. That seems to be predominantly what these younger folks are dying from, sudden death, blood clotting, heart attacks, strokes, what you name it, they're dropping dead. Um, 
you roll forward into Q1. Uh, we looked at the insurance numbers again. Uh, we haven't been looking at the CDC data, but we'll look at that soon. But basically, insurance companies reported Q1. Uh, they saw anywhere between 20 and 30 percent excess uh, mortality. And uh, that's down from the uh, mandate spike, but still running alarmingly high. They're also seeing uh, continued increases in their disability loss ratio. So as we roll forward to the vaccination program, more and more people are filing for injuries or they may not even know they're injured. They're just being incapacitated and can't work anymore. So bottom line here is um, we have uh, continued mortality going on in Q1. And the funeral homes are having a great business in Q1. I looked at their results. That, that industry is about 80% private, but there's about 20% of it's public. I looked at two companies, Carriage Services, uh, which saw their contract volume um, grow 9% sequentially in Q1. And then Service Corp of America um, was expecting to be down uh, considerably year over year in Q1, but they were flat. And then they noted, unfortunately, that compared to 20, the first quarter of 2020, their business was still up about 17, 18%. And they noted on the call, the CFO, and this is a quote from him. Uh, and again, it's just not COVID that we're seeing as Tom, who is the CEO, just to reemphasize this, this is, these are excess deaths, levels of mortality that are higher than we've expected, even when you try to back out COVID. So, in, in short, we have the uh, evidence of the murder uh, and the crime. It's showing up in the numbers. There's government databases on numbers. And those of you in Canada, you might be familiar with uh, Kelly Brown. He's um, an independent uh, fin financial person who has done the same analysis on your public uh, death data, and it shows the same results, um, especially uh, among younger folks. So. The Canadians uh, um, death data confirmed what I found earlier because there's a lag on Canadian death data. But bottom line is younger people should not be dying uh, in year two of a pandemic that's winding down with miracle vaccines. So the only conclusion I can come to is it's the vaccines. Anybody with any kind of you know critical thinking skills would agree. The thing that's uh, bothering me is that uh, the mainstream media doesn't want to touch us with the 10 foot pole. Uh, uh, I talked to Senator um, Ron Johnson yesterday. I'm going to get him this data. I'm also going to get him a letter that we sent to the insurance industry. All the data that I've showed you, we sent a letter to 100 CEOs and 50 state regulators about a month and a half ago. I was not on the calls, but calls were held with some of the uh, frontline doctors. I think Ryan Cole was on one of the calls. And uh, out of the uh, 100 CEOs, no CEO showed up, but they kicked some of the uh, there are lower underlings on the call. We got about 25 participants, two state regulators, and about 23 companies. Out of that, we have a small working group. And uh, there are people that believe the vaccine is causing this. And they're trying to get industry support to at least acknowledge the problem and investigate the vaccine. So things are going slower than I would like. But we're trying to make the insurance industry aware that they're the bag holders here. They've been defrauded and they need to start squawking loudly. And uh, not only do they have a humanitarian reason, they have a shareholder interest reason. If they ignore this, they're gonna to lose tons of money. So they have an obligation to humanity and to their shareholders. So it's a, it's a twin assault on them. So essentially we put them on notice and hopefully they do the right thing and they figure it out fast. If not, um, you know, I'm gonna to continue to uh, make noise on Wall Street and get, uh, my cohorts there are convinced that we're correct and hopefully get these stocks punished so that it brings some sort of media attention to this whole debacle that we have going on. So, you know, uh, David Martin talked about a crime. Here's the evidence. And uh, that's basically all I have to say. It's, 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 it's a slam dunk in my opinion. The fact that this vaccination program hasn't been halted is only testament to the fact there's a lot of people who are so complicit in this, they can't admit that they're wrong, uh, the media is involved, uh, the CDC, the FDA, the NIH, the Biden administration, parts of the, of the uh, uh, Trump administration, the pharmaceutical companies and, and the tech overlords that have been censoring all this life-saving treatment. So basically there's a constituency that are too invested in this to admit they're wrong. And so what we're seeing now is doubling down 
continuing along as if nothing's happened and they better um they better hire lots of security guards in my humble opinion uh, i can't agree with you anymore i actually believe that when they've said that you know i said we talked about it earlier that they clearly have put the delineation uh that they feel that they can hack people and if they do it against their will there is no place they can hide there's no place they can hide Period. There's no place. You can take one of us, you can take a dozen of us, you can take a few thousand of us, you can take a hundred thousand. They will never sleep well, ever. They can sell it. I, Ed, I, I don't mind if someone tries to sell. You want to be a hackable human being? You want to be... Te- if you sell it, I'm a capitalist. I, I'm okay with that. But once you start telling me that you're going to do it against my will and you're going to use the government as an instrument to carry out that will... You're not going to be sleeping anymore. It won't be me. It'll be my brother. It'll be my brother's brother. We will find you. You can hide in a cave. You can hide in it. You can hide underground. We will track you down and we will bring you to justice. And I know that for a fact. So uh, I will now thank you so much for waiting around, Edward. Uh, I see that I want to keep on showing the, the stuff that you're doing with some of the scientists. I told you, Dr. Weissman wants to meet you and have an hour. I want to be a fly on the wall. He wants to show you other uh, evidence of what you have with other examples around the world so that you can keep on showing it because it's happening in real time. And I'm really grateful for your efforts. And we needed someone like you to speak up. So thank you so much, Edward, for all you're doing as well. Uh, Thank you as well. And I just want to echo what a lot of the people have said here. Obviously, uh, there's no regulatory body or government agency coming to rescue us. We have to change public opinion. And uh, the only way to do that is like what Dr. Rose said, you know, one person at a time, keep bothering people, keep uh, changing the marginal mind. And I do feel like the tide's turning. More and more people are starting to um, question the vaccine. I'm hearing from a lot of my friends in California that even some of their most diehard uh, COVIDians are starting to uh, say to themselves and others, I'm not going to get the booster. So we're starting to have an impact, but we need to get outrage going and flip the tables. And hopefully it's a slow grind, but that's how it's going to be done through the court of public opinion. I agree. We have a judicial process. We have a, we have a, a process by which, you know, we have to get the legislatures to get on board. We have to go to congressmen, you know, elected officials. So we have to bring it to the courts, bring it to the legislature, elect the people that understand that are in the understanding that this is a mistake and it has to stop now. And I think we have to, uh, you know, bring everyone to justice that needs to be just, you know, to, to be heard, you know. So I, I can't say that you said it better than anybody else. I think this is just one of the many process. We're getting lambs by everybody here. Sorry about all my sound effects. Oh, my God. All right. So. I'm going to let Chris say thank you as well. Chris, are you there? 